Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to Musical Scootering. Today, I'm going to be showing you how I'm going to, you know, kind of fix up this rail that I've built. You guys have not seen this thing on the channel before, but that's why I'm filming it. It's because all of you guys are requesting about how I build all my obstacles and how I kind of like get around to making all the things that I can grind on and jump off of. So. I made this rail recently, I kind of just did it on my own time. I figured since there was more stuff to do to it, that I could film that for YouTube. I figured I'd kind of show you guys how I make stuff. About this rail, I found it in a crick actually, and you know, that would explain why it's uh, kind of dinged up. And as it is right now, I have used it a little bit, that's why there's grind marks and stuff all over it, but as I was using it, it bent, so I figured that I would have to put a few more supports onto it and you know hopefully it won't bend after I have the new supports on it. So I'm gonna have to cut you know one or two of these down to the same size as these because it's just a flat bar of course. So I'm gonna start by measuring each of these because I do not remember what the measurement was on them. So it looks like this is nine and a quarter, which means the other one should be two, because I don't build stuff lopsided. I'll probably cut both of these down to that, just in case I want to have four legs on it, but I could also just settle for three legs if I think that's going to work. I'm going to get to measuring these so that I know where to cut them. Yeah, I'm going to cut them at the same height as these. I just put the rail down there so it's out of my workspace and I'm not like working over the top of it. But yeah, I'll probably use the miter saw over here and then uh, cut these down after I got them measured out. So yeah, now that I know that the measurement on my actual rail is nine and a quarter, I'm gonna start by measuring nine and a quarter inches right there. Now this wood is kind of rough, but it doesn't really matter for what I'm working on. But as you can see, I made a little crow's foot is what they call it so that you're not depending on one little mark to know like where to make your line, you know, all the way across the board. And you probably don't need a line across the board to know where to cut it. You could probably cut it just based on where the crow's foot is. But for my sake, you know, I like I like having the line there just so that I can like line up the blade with the line no matter where the teeth are. So I'm not depending on one little mark for an entire cut. So I got my speed square here and all I got to do is just shove it up to where the point meets the 90 degree angle and then just draw a line right there so I know where to cut. Just like that and then I'll check to see if my mark is right and it is. And then I got to do the same thing over here. And since this is already kind of like cut out for, um, as you can see here, the base starts a little thicker and then the top gets thinner so that it's not like interfering with the bar. I'm doing the same thing over here. I'm using these little cutouts to my advantage. So I'm measuring nine and a quarter from this end over to here. And then same thing on this one. I already did that one. Okay, first of all, I have a paper bag back here so that all the sawdust gets caught in it and I don't have to clean everything up. So as you can see, my line's right there and my blade is gonna come down on the right side of my line since I wanna use this part of the wood and the width of the blade is gonna cut off on this side of the wood. One last thing would be to have your cord come under your machine so it doesn't get in the way of your blade as you're cutting something. You cut your cord right in half. Safety glasses acquired. I got my wood tied up against the fence so that it doesn't move around while I'm trying to cut. And I got my blade on the waist side of what I'm cutting. Here we go. See, having the line is so nice because Wherever the teeth on the blade land, you can still tell that it's going to be in line with your mark. So here I have both of my pieces cut to the same height. Perfect. And now I can put them onto my rail after I get these kind of sanded down a little more. I'll probably do that at school. 
If you're wondering how the bag method worked, uh, I'm just gonna pull the saw out of the way. You got all your sawdust already in the bag for you. So I guess there was a little bit of spill out. I mean, that's pretty easy to clean up. It's just like a little bit of, I'd say that worked pretty good. Sawdust is already in the bag. All right guys, so it's the next day. I took these into the wood shop at school and kind of cleaned them up a little bit so that they'd like fit better underneath this rail. And now it's time to find where I need to put these underneath the rail so that they're all spaced out evenly. So I want like one right here and one right here. So I'm gonna have to find equal distance between all four of these. To evenly space out the legs for this rail, I'm thinking that I should measure from here to here and then just divide that length by three. Because what I'm doing with these legs is I'm basically dividing this rail into three sections. So I want each section to be an equal length. They don't fit. I think there's a slight bend in the rail, just a little bit like this. And I know that because they're the exact same size as the legs that are already on the rail. What I'm actually going to do is jack the rail up from the middle until I can get these to slide underneath, and then I'll know exactly where they have to be to screw them in from the bottom of the base. Now I'm going to release the jack. I'm actually going to trace around them and you'll see in a second why I'm doing this. Here's the drill bit that I'm going to use and then here's the screw that I'm going to use. So if I put that behind there, you can still kind of see that the screw is a little bit bigger in terms of the grooves. So this isn't gonna just bore out the hole to where the screw can't fit, but the screw will be able to bite into the wood that it's going into, but also has a pilot hole. Now I marked the leg with its corresponding mark on the board. So now I know which one goes where. I'm also gonna be using this screw, but it's the same diameter as the other screw, so it's still good. There's my marks for where I'm gonna drill my pilot holes on this board. Obviously you guys know how I'm going to be attaching these things to the bottom, but for the top, I'm seeing that uh, right here you can see that there's oh like wheel marks that go down the side of the rail. That's because I've already used this thing. And on the top, you can see where the board slides across the rail. So in between those two marks is a surface that doesn't even get touched by your scooter. So I'm thinking I could drill a hole right here in between the two marks and I wouldn't hit it with my wheel or my deck when I'm doing board slides or 50-50s. So I'm gonna use a center punch. Thank <laughs> you. 
Now, to be honest, I'm kind of winging it here, but here's what I just did. So using this drill bit, I went down through here to drill the bottom hole, but somehow right in the middle, right where I want it. I think I'm going to do that right over here as well because it works so good. I just kept the drill as straight up and down as I possibly could and it seemed to work out. I'm just gonna drill the pilot holes from where they are right now. It should be fine. Like I can get it pretty straight up and down, not to where it's coming out the side of the board. So I think I'm just gonna send it like this. Guys, it's done. Look at that. Finally got some more support underneath this thing so I can actually ride it. And be watching out for a video of me actually seshing this thing now that I got it done. It's a really, really fun rail. So I'm looking forward to getting some super sick clips on this. So thank you guys for watching. I hope this kind of satisfied your, your need for a, a video on how to build some of my obstacles. Yeah, I literally just found this bar in a crick and turn it into something great like this. So you guys can do the same with my tips and hope you guys enjoyed the video. Be sure to subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next video.